I got up at about a quarter to, depending on the day, quarter to seven, and I drove around on the Cushman and emptied all the garbage cans around campus. <laughs> and I loved it. It was great. You know, I was, I was the only guy who could drive vehicles, one of the only students who could actually drive the vehicles on the sidewalks. In the four years from 1984 to 1988, Vince Flynn got pretty familiar with the St. Thomas landscape, especially the 100 yards along Creighton Avenue as a tight end on Mark Deanhart's football squad. But before he became a Tommy, Flynn was courted by a Johnny legend, Coach John Gallardi. He walks me out onto the football field at St. John's. And it's, you know, it's a very picturesque setting. And he's, he's telling me how you see these woods? And he's, you know, he's, only his gags can do is his eyes glass over and he looks off. See these woods? Anytime you want, you can leave practice and you can go walk in those woods. As far as you want, you can go. But if you go to St. Thomas, that field, it's surrounded by houses, and you can't go in those houses. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking, why would I want to go in those houses? <laughs> the econ major could very well be in those houses, on the bookshelf. A decade ago, Flynn put together some local investors to help publish his first novel, Term Limits. I'm fiercely proud of the fact that I got 60 plus rejection letters. And I used to tack them up on my bulletin board when I lived over on 1836 Wordsworth in St. Paul while I was writing that darn thing. That was my motivation. That was going to St. Thomas Academy and St. Thomas College. That was having, you know, teachers and coaches that didn't want to hear excuses. No excuses are needed. Flynn's next six novels earned him a seven figure contract with a New York publisher. The kid who used to attend bar in St. Paul now walks down the Avenue of the Americas. I never want to walk in this building and feel like they just had to lay off 30 people because they overpaid me on a contract. It's absolutely scientific fact. AM 1500's Joe Souchere was the first local celebrity to take notice of Flynn when he was hawking term limits to anybody who'd listen. The mistake people make, and Vince hasn't made it, is that people think these things are easy, and they're not, and I think Vince knows that. He knows that creating these kinds of novels isn't easy, and if he's going down the wrong road in the book, he's been smart enough to back out and start over. He's on the right path, he doesn't need my advice. Seven novels, including his current bestseller, Consent to Kill, have earned Flynn millions of fans. From the curmudgeon Souchere, to the President of the United States. So here comes President Bush. Um, I stick up my hand, I said, Mr. President Vince Flynn, it's a real honor to meet you. Vince, great to meet you, I, I recognize you, I love your books. Would you mind taking a ride in the limousine with the First Lady and I on, on our way to the next event? Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, so I get in the car, now it's Governor Plenty and Mrs. Plenty, and I know them fairly well, they're great people, and, and the President and the First Lady. It very surreal. And so the long and short of it is, I end up out at 3M without a ride. I'm, st I'm stranded. <laughs> I eventually get home. My 10-year-old son has plugged the toilet, and I'm in there with the plunger going after it. You know, it's, at the end of the day, it's just, you know, <laughs> my wife and I will never leave this town. We love it here. And you just, you know, 